Hello and welcome to the first lesson of the technical analysis series. We're going to be covering introduction to candlestick charts. So before we start, the format of this course, if you will, and certainly of this video, is that it'll be a sort of single recording lecture style, right? So no fancy editing, no fancy animations. I've got some slides, we're going to go through them and then look at some price charts. So every lesson of this course will have an outline. So the outline for this lesson is a disclaimer. Then we're going to jump into what is technical analysis very briefly. Then we'll go into candlestick anatomy, candlestick OHLC. We'll talk about time frames, patterns, end with an important tip and then round up and conclude. So quick disclaimer, neither this presentation nor anything on my Twitter, Telegram or any other medium or mode of communication, including private correspondence, constitute financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, no formal qualifications, please trade entirely at your own risk and this video and the series in fact is for entertainment purposes only. With that said, let's jump into it. So very briefly, uh, what is technical analysis? I'll share with you my understanding um, and how I view it, and certainly the, the sort of underlying premise throughout this whole course. So the way I see it is technical analysis is simply a tool to make probabilistic forecasts of future price behavior based on price history. Okay, And this word probabilistic is really important um, because it's all based on probability and odds and working to get the odds in our favor as opposed to deriving knowledge or facts from the price chart, right? So the second use, if you will, as an elaboration of the first is to find risk-defined entries and exits on instruments that a speculator wants to be long or short, right? So you don't have to be uh, an entirely technical trader, let's say. Let's say you're fundamentally bullish on an asset for some reason and you are looking for some sort of entry to go long. Uh, technical analysis could be a one tool that you use uh, to suggest where you might get a good risk reward long position on that instrument. And the third point is really the most important that technical analysis is not a way to know the future price behavior of an instrument based on price history. There's no knowledge here, right? We work with probability, we work with odds, and we work with chance. It's, it's not the fact, you know, it's not the case that once you sort of learn TA, technical analysis, whatever that means, um, that you can simply look at a chart and be able to know where price is going, right? That's not it. It's much more of a humble science uh, than that. And because of that, uh, in my opinion, technical analysis is best thought of as a risk management tool. And that will be elaborated upon in the second lesson, which is on risk management. So we'll leave that there and let's jump into the actual topic. So we'll talk about candlestick anatomy. Um, so candlestick charts are one version of a price chart, right? If you go on any platform, in my case TradingView, if we open this up here, you can see that you get lots of options to show you um, basically different forms of a price chart. You can get bars, you can get, you know, well, hollow candles, fair enough. You can get line charts, um, you know, Heiken and Ashi candles or whatever else. Um, we're going to focus on your sort of default Japanese candlesticks which are, I believe, I don't have any numbers for this, but based on my impression, the most widely used format, okay? So we're going to break the anatomy of Japanese candlesticks down into three constituent parts. The first is the candlestick color. Okay, so a red or a bearish candle indicates that the closing price was lower than the opening price, okay? And within a given time frame, and we will talk about time frames, so don't worry. And then the opposite of that, being that a green or a bullish candle, suggests that the closing price was higher than the opening price within a given time frame. Okay, so that's candlestick colors. Very simple. It's either red, green, black, white, or whatever you choose to change it to yourself on your platform. But that's really what it indicates. Whether price closed higher than it opened, if it's a bullish candle, or whether price closed lower than it opened, if it's a bearish candle. Jumping to the next bit of the anatomy, the actual candle body itself. Um, on a red or bearish candle, which we know from just a second ago, which indicates that the closing price was lower than the opening price, the upper body 
is in fact the opening price and the lower body is the closing price. And for a green or bullish candle, which means that the closing price was higher than the opening price, where what the body means essentially flips, right? So in a bearish candle, the upper body is the opening price and the lower body is the closing price and you just flip that around. So for a bullish candle, the upper body is the closing price and the lower body is the opening price, okay? And then to a bit more simple, um, to the wicks, upper wick is simply the highest price point within a given time frame, and the lower wick is the lowest price point within a given time frame. I know this all sounds a bit ridiculous in theory, so let's jump to this image courtesy of 123RF. Thank you very much. Link to their page in the description. So this is what we just talked about. We've got a bullish candle. You can pretend this is green and this is red. So high and low. That stays consistent between both bullish and bearish candle. And this is what I was just talking about with the body, right? So with a bullish candle, the lower part of the body is the open and the upper part of the body is the close, which makes sense because the candle is bullish. We're essentially saying it's closed higher than it opened. So this open here, close here makes sense, right? And simply the opposite for a bearish candle, the high and low stay the same. All that's different is that the opening price is the upper body and the closing price is the lower body, which again makes sense because the fact that it's a bearish candle means that it closed lower, we'd expect this to be reflected on the y-axis, lower than it opened. Okay, so this slide and this slide are really important. Once again, thank you to 123RF. Um, so maybe keep those open as we make our way through the lesson. And link, of course, as usual, uh, for all of these lectures, a uh, link to the PDF that I'm using will be in the description for you to download and print off and do whatever you want. So let's jump into candlestick OHLC. Quite simply, when hovering your cursor over a candlestick, your platform should show you the OHLC, which, stands for, which is an acronym that stands for Open, High, Low and Close of any single candlestick. Why is this important? Because we want to keep tabs on a lot of important um, price points related to candlesticks, right? So for example, where the week opened, you know, what price the week opened, uh, what price the day that we're trading opened, uh, the high or low of the day, you know, the, the precise high or low of a given move, whether price closed to a swing point, etc., etc. So I, I use TradingView, for example, and you can see if I hover with my cursor, Let's go to the daily chart. Over yesterday's candle, on in the top left, it will tell me that data. So you can see that yesterday's candle uh, opened at 63.22, the high was at 65.30, the low was at 63.21.5, and the close was at 64.87.5. So as you can see, whenever you get your cursor, oops, whenever you get your cursor over a candlestick, the data here will change and give you all of that information, right? So for example, um, one of the concepts we talked about is the high of the day. So what I could do is map this out here. You know, what's the high, what's yesterday's high? 6530.0, you know, you can go into coordinates and set that. And so when I'm trading on the intraday, you know, I'm looking at a lower time frame. I, I'm aware, even though I'm on the hourly, what the higher time frame looks like and why this level is significant, right? And I can even um, label it, let's say, yesterday's high, just so I have some context without having to jump to jump back to the daily time frame, right? That's just one example. We could do the same um, with the week, right? So where did if it, you know you could use this as a quick test? If this is our weekly candle, where did the week uh, week open? I'll give you a couple seconds to answer that. Obviously, we know for a bullish candle, the lower body is where the week opened. So I can go over and map that out, make sure it lines up. Open at 6240.0, 6240.0. And so then I can label that as weekly open, which also tends to be a kind of significant price area. So I know that if we get back below the weekly open, um, maybe the tides are shifting, if you will. Don't pay that much attention to sort of all this daily open, weekly open strategies necessarily. It's just important to get familiar with the open, high, low and close tool. So you're then able when you need to, uh, to map out all of these structures. Okay. 
And those are just a couple of examples. Time frames, very popular topic, so let's dedicate some time to it. Uh, at its simplest, the time frame you choose dictates the time period that one candle represents. So on a 15 minute chart, one candle represents 15 minutes, uh, and it also gives context to the open, high, low, and close stuff, right? So on the daily time frame, um, I can look at the open, high, low, and close of the whole trading day, okay? So just to put that into practice, if we go to this hourly time frame, so this candle has seven minutes, just under eight minutes until it closes. But let's look at the preceding candle, right? So this candle here, if I'm going to make it very clear, since we are on the hourly time frame, okay, one candle represents one hour of trading. Okay, so this is data on one hour of trading. And if we use our open, high, low, and close, we know that in within that hour, the price opened at 64.60, the high was at 64.77.5. I'll just make that clear in case it isn't. So our whole one hour of trading, our cursor is over it, and it also tells us the open, high, low, and close. 64.77.5 was the high, so that we know that, you know what, let's make this actually a lot better. So our cursor is over here. This is a bullish candle because of its color, right? And that means it the closing price was higher than the opening price. So the open, we know that this is the open. The high, we know that the wick is the high. Low, we know that the lower wick is the low. And the close, we know, is the upper body. Okay, that's just one example. So, hourly time frame, that means each candle represents one hour of trading. And we can look at the open, high, low, and close to get precise information of what happened within that hour of trading, right? So, this candle is one hour, this candle is one hour, this candle is one hour. All of them represent one hour of trading. Okay, jumping back into time frames, um, higher time frame candles are comprised of lower time frame candles, right? So one hour, one hour time frame is you know candle is potentially made up of four 15 minute candles to 30 minute candles, uh, however you want to think of it, right? So sort of when people say price is fractal, um, what they really mean is that what happens on the lower time frames is essentially reflected on the higher time frames okay the higher time frame candles are simply made up of lower time frame data right so if we jump back um, to this hourly candle we can break it down into four 15 minute candle and whatever happens in those four 15 minute candles created this hourly candle okay it's a lot simpler than you think <laughs> don't get don't get too hung up on it So another point is that candle closes are very significant and don't get ahead of yourself before a candle close. Uh, a lot can change in what a candle looks like between the open and the close and this is especially true if we're dealing with higher time frame candles like the daily and the weekly etc. Um, especially if you're trading sort of volatile markets you can definitely get caught off guard if you're say trading a daily time frame strategy and the candle looks really good sort of towards the evening. Um, assuming the candle closes at midnight, you decide to take a position and then you get some sharp volatility or a sharp sell-off uh, in the last four hours. And at that point, the daily candle has changed completely, uh, perhaps invalidating your daily strategy and you're left in a bit of a pickle, right? So generally, it's a good idea to wait for the candle to close on the time frame you're trading before taking a position or at least before um, making any conclusions, right? So for example, Let's say, I don't want to make anything too technical, right? So let's say I have, I want to buy this rec within this rectangle, okay? Let's just use this for example. Let's say for one, ignore the actual technicals of it, let's focus on the candlestick stuff. Let's say I want to buy within this rectangle and I'm like, okay, well if price bounces here, I'll want to step in. And if I'm watching the hourly candles at one point, the body of the candle was down here, right? And let's say I was in a long or I was waiting to buy and it got all the way to here and I said, oh no, no, I don't want to buy this orange 
support box or orange rectangle that I want to buy has clearly been broken, I'll wait for something else, and then I kind of leave my computer or whatever else, and then I come back and I see that price actually closed above the rectangle, um, and that my original trading thesis or trading idea was absolutely fine, okay? So it's really important to let the actual candlesticks close um, before coming to a conclusion, especially when you're trading uh, higher time frames, it's going to be really important to let the candlestick essentially cement the next one to open and then you can start coming up with your trading ideas. And on that point, in my opinion, beginners would be well served to focus on a couple of higher time frames uh, to not get caught up in the noise. Right? It's, I know it's really exciting to look at the one minute, the five minute and you know just see all these seemingly big moves but for the most part it tends to be quite insignificant and you're not as a beginner certainly you're not going to take a whole bunch of trades based off of those time frames um what has worked well for me and other people was find a couple of time frames one slightly higher one slightly lower um that work for you and monitor essentially at least for a bit uh, just those two time frames outlined there at the bottom my favorite combination is the daily time frame and the hourly time frame. And just looking at those two um, and observing price, you can certainly improve quite quickly and keep a sort of big picture uh, view in mind as opposed to get freaked out by every five minute candle move. Candlestick patterns. Um, I have some reasonably strong opinion on candles, opinions on candlestick patterns. Um, I think they can actually be quite the vice for a lot of beginner traders because what they'll do is they'll learn all these candlestick patterns and then go into the market with no context and no you know no other supporting information with total disregard to time frames and will basically try to trade every single reversal candlestick pattern or anything that even looks like a candlestick pattern and try to take a position um i don't think it's particularly useful but i will cover the topic itself so there are a ton of candlestick patterns, but the ones I pay attention to personally are swing highs and swing lows, which I appreciate aren't a candlestick pattern per se, but it's still something on the price chart to be aware of. Um, but then when it comes to more orthodox candlestick patterns, uh, dojis are good, shooting star and hammer. I've also made good use of engulfing candles and also tweezers. Those four or five uh, patterns are ones I pay attention to, and I'll leave a link in the description to an image and a sort of web page with a much longer list. Um, but with all of that said, I would implore you to take a nuanced approach, right? And as I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of the time with beginner traders, they'll just have learned all sorts of patterns. They've memorized all the cheat sheets that they saw on the internet. Maybe you've got it on the wall next to your computer and they start looking for them everywhere and trying to trade based on the patterns alone, which is quite consistently a very bad idea. So how does one remedy that and still make good use of candlestick patterns without becoming obsessed or taking them without context? My suggestion is to look for higher time frame clear patterns and most importantly where it makes sense to do so, okay? And what does it mean where it makes sense to do so? Well, a lot of these candlestick patterns are reversal patterns, which essentially means if the market is trending up, what you'll have is your candlestick reversal pattern kind of at the top of the trend and then the trend will reverse and go in the other direction right the issue is and then a lot of the time when people look for reversal candlesticks they completely ignore um, the fact that in order to have a reversal you actually need something to reverse right so instead what you'll have a lot of beginners doing is that price will be sort of in a tight range and sort of moving sideways and they'll keep looking for all sorts of candlestick patterns here and here and here and everywhere and eventually take way too many trades without much regard for the context and end up losing all their money that being said how does one fix it in my opinion, it makes more sense to pay attention to reversal patterns where there is a strong trend up or down. And the trend simply, you know, even in the most non-technical sense, it's basically a discernible direction of the market, right? So is the market trended up, you know, an uptrend? Is it making higher highs and higher lows? Something like this. Or is the market 
trending down and making lower highs and lower lows, okay? So when you get reversal patterns during quite strong trends, usually at the, you know, at the top or the bottom of a trend, um, there, once you have a clear trend and you're seeing some weakness in the market, at that point it makes sense to look for candlestick patterns. It makes a lot less sense to look for them pretty much anywhere with no regard for the context, right? And there's a lot of fuckery on the internet of people trying to come up with trading systems and basically sell you something based almost entirely on certain candlestick patterns without any appreciation of the nuance or the context or anything else. So they're a good tool, but they're a good tool in the right hands and in the right context. Um, I implore you once again not to fall for any sort of easy way out like, oh, if you, if you see this candle short, if you see this candle long and you'll make money, if it were really that easy, um, most people wouldn't be losing money in the markets, okay? Nope, we'll keep the color scheme, thank you. We come to the important tip, or two of them technically, and these will save you a lot of money in the long run, is that use higher time frames, especially as a beginner. Again, the hourly and the daily being my favorite combo, maybe something else works for you, but certainly shouldn't be something like the one minute and the five minute, okay? And also, zoom out. Especially if you're sort of at a point where you're new and you're excited and you're itching to take a trade, it's really tempting to sort of watch everything candle to candle and not have an appreciation for the higher time frame or higher, con you know, higher bigger picture view, uh, and that will cost you money. So if you kind of take these two tips to heart, to use higher time frames and zoom out, um, you'll get caught with your pants down a lot less. So let's conclude. Well, first of all, well done for making it through the first lesson and do enjoy the rest of the course. Uh, secondly, learning how to read candlestick, uh, re learning how to read a candlestick chart and doing so intuitively is very important. Okay, so spend some time studying and looking at price charts until it becomes second nature. Uh, quite simply, that is just the product of screen time and spending enough time actually looking at charts. Um, so it's you know, just like any other training, if you will. Get in the habit of looking at candlestick open, high, low, and close, which is something I wish someone told me when I was starting off, um, especially for marking out key opens, you know, closes, high, lows, swing points. It's really good to just have that tool at your disposal, um, and it will also mean you don't really get lost um, of the bigger picture view when you're trading on lower time frames if you have those levels, higher time frame levels marked out in advance. When it comes to time frames, as I've mentioned, it's really easy to get caught up in all the low time frame noise. Find a couple when you're starting out, study them, observe price, and get familiar, okay? And then on the topic of candlestick patterns, they can be useful, but only if they appear in the right context. So don't hunt for them everywhere, and wait for them to set up where it makes sense to do so. And again, we covered what that qualifier means, is we're looking for reversal patterns once there's a discernible trend, um, and we're not looking for them randomly without any context and not taking trades based off of anything that remotely looks like the kind of candlestick pattern that you have on your cheat sheet uh, glued to your computer or your wall. And um, when it comes to those patterns, find a handful that work for you um, don't, don't take a sort of shotgun approach of trying to learn them all and trade them all everywhere. That's certainly a beginner mistake where they're like, oh man, there are so many patterns, I can take so many trades if I just learn them all. It's really not like that. Uh, find a couple that work for you, wait for them to set up where it makes sense to do so, um, and basically see what happens. Don't get into the habit of thinking, okay, this is a candlestick chart, I'll be able to make money off of candlestick patterns, this kind of looks like this, so I'm gonna take a trade. Just <laughs> the context and the nuance, I've droned on about it, but it's really the most important thing and the thing that, the most, that most beginners really get wrong. And the best way to conclude is with those two tips, use higher time frames and zoom out. Um, I don't, I'm not even going to sort of really get into why or how that's beneficial. I'm sure your own progress <laughs> will reflect that. But the overall point is that as a beginner, I understand because I was there. It's super tempting to look at every single move, five minute, 15 minute. Oh, this looks like a candlestick and sort of always be in a trade. You know, that sort of forex scalping day trade lifestyle nonsense. Um, but you'll really build a good 
sense and appreciation for price if you use higher time frames and zoom out to get an overall view. All right, that's all from me. Uh, thanks for watching, enjoy the next lessons, and I'll see you for the next one.